Uh, good, Sri Ram. It's it's going great actually. Great, good to know. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. I can see Kartik there. Kartik, how is it going for you? How much you are? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Sri Ram a bit busy with uh, the current work. Huh? But I okay. uh, started slowly, like recently, a uh, week before started my preparation. I think it will take again in two months or something like that. It will take a whole proper yeah. mm -hmm. So we are planning for our PDR uh, by June or July, okay. uh, mid of July. So uh, got busy with those uh, things. Let me see, like, but I'm aiming for at least two months to got complete certification. Right, right. I know. I had to take some time to prepare for this. Yeah. Okay, good day. <laughs> I know it doesn't happen just like that. PMB is one of the cores, uh, which yeah, means the yeah. uh, amount of investment there on the time. Yes, and I could see uh, from LinkedIn, like people are getting their certifications, right? <laughs> so it is one way of motivating me, like. Uh, yeah, yeah I, know. I, I know sometimes it motivates, sometimes it will feel like guilt, oh man, I'm not yet ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. I love <laughs> it. May get a feel, oh, God, these guys are doing exams. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it I also means me, like, okay, lagging okay. in the plan. Yeah, sometimes you think, oh, it's a lockdown period. I thought nobody would write the exam. These guys are writing exams. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> okay, I know. So, so there are people utilizing the time very efficiently. That uh, lockdown time is being so highly utilized for the preparation purpose. Mm, exactly. Many of them are getting ready for the exams in the right way. It's a good sign. Good. Good to know that. Uh, Karthik, appreciate it. Okay, I can see a few more people are joining in. Good to see people coming up. Uh, yeah, you can get to mute mode if you're not speaking. Great there. And I know this is Saturday post lunch. Um, even I felt slightly drowsy and sleepy, and I felt that, okay, it's time to share knowledge with the team, right? Um, this program is organized uh, to give knowledge or at least give a slight push on your preparation, right? Um, I know we discussed elaborately about the quality management or any knowledge area, you know, regular trainings that's happening. Then why we have to do this is, uh, what will happen is, over the days or time with the regular distractions in our job, what we do, or our regular way of life, we'll slowly get diluted on what we are learning. Even though the content, what I'm going to say is already there in the books, in fact, well explained in the books, but sometimes when you hear some stories, it makes you to remember or recall or get a rhythm of your learning, right? So um, what I understood in these years of helping people and clearing PMP courses, everybody has amazing knowledge. Um, and no need to tell everybody is amazing now because for the PMP people come with experience. They don't come just like that from schools, right? They, they have an experience. They can speak better than me what I'm. But the problem here is when they want to go towards the goal of examination, they get deviated or they get distracted. Many things are there at the age of 25, 30s and 40s. No need to tell a lot of things are there. At the age of 18 and 15, there is a different kind of distraction. In the age of 25 and 30, there are different kind of distractions. Now, we love to read everyday newspaper, some numbers running on. I don't know what number it is. They call us a death number, number of people dying, right? It's given there. So we have too many things running in our mind. So what will happen is at time you feel it's okay, yeah, let's take a break, right? That's how it goes. So the intention of running this program is to bring you on track, get you could you feel that, hey, okay, yeah, things are moving on, right? We, we need to move on along with the world. But I'll tell you one thing, uh, some of them are thinking that the world is going down and the uh, situation will get more worse and the things will go bad. Okay, that is one uh, pessimistic group always think like that. Um, but again, the investors and business people and CEOs and top achieving people, spiritual leaders, they all look world in an optimistic way. Okay, it is a good stop time right? Sometimes you have to stop your modem and restart so that it works well. You reboot your computer, it works well. It clear off all the cache and other unwanted stuff, right? I feel this is some sort of time happening. So we are seeing this kind of situation in our life. I don't know whether your parents seen it before or your upcoming generation going to see, but we are seeing it. Now, there are some good things to take away, some bad things to forget in this program, what's happening in the last two, three months. Now, coming back to the plan of what we are preparing here or what you're reading here, 
I would recommend you don't slow down the way you are working. Keep up the momentum. Not for exam alone, your preparation, reading habits, and reading about your domain, what you want. I, I always tell in the classes, don't read only project management. That alone will not give you everything in the life. You have to learn your domain. Uh, there are some people coming to me and ask, Sridham, a PMB will it get me a job? It will provide it. You have domain knowledge also. Project management is one sort of knowledge which help you to lead your lead something from the destination. I mean, start point to the destination, right? That's how we do. We take one action A and complete it. Action B, complete it. How will you complete it effectively? That's what you're going to talk here. But the domain knowledge is very important. Unfortunately, after we get the first job in our life, we stop learning. I'll tell you, most of us will agree with me. After you got your first job, your learning process stopped. You would read a few pages in here and there in LinkedIn, but not consciously reading for a growing purpose, right? If you're not doing that, I'll tell you even PMP or um, Harvard University degree will not help you. So in that case, I would request everybody, please keep up the habit of reading. Don't worry too much about the news happening around you. Create something for yourself that's very vital. Okay, that's good for a good Gyan session because this Gyan is needed in the post lunch. So I thought of putting that. Again, whenever I tell that, I tell to myself also, right? It's, it's a message for me. I was, hey, Shiram, go read. Right, that's a message. <laughs> anyway, that's good. So whenever I look at you, look at myself as a mirror. Okay, good there. So I can see a bunch of people joining there and happy to see most of you there. And some of you are preparing for examination. Some of you kept your exam as a secret agenda. Some of you are reading, but not focusing. Some of you are writing questions, but not clear on what you're answering. Because I generally see people scoring 65, 70, 73 percentage. I'm not saying it's bad, it's a good percentage. But if you stay in the same percentage, it means something you are not focusing. In your exam preparation, you have to focus a little more, give more attention. Don't read like a school student. It won't help you. Read like a CEO, read like a leader, read with a broad thought process. School children read just like a text content, right? You have to see the meaning behind the text. If you can't see that, you have to work out that area. That's very important. What I'm telling is, even today, you will clear PMP somehow. But when you go to the job, you may not shine because you still you cannot read the meaning behind what they are saying. You will still go only by the word a person said, only by the text in the email. So you'll suffer a lot even in the job position. So kindly start seeing behind what's happening. Understand the meaning behind that. Good, that. Okay, with that, what we'll do is we'll jump inside the course. Today, we will touch um, quality management. Before that, um, let me see a few phases if you're ready with your makeup and look so that I can say hi. I will get a good feel to start. So I would recommend you to come on the mic, come on the camera. If you're not ready, stop there. If you're ready, please open up the camera. Some of the faces I can see, I will also feel a good feel, right? Any faces coming in there? Akshay is coming, good to see. Okay, let me look at some of the people there. Okay, Sri, uh, Srikanth is there, very good. Raghu is there, Kavita is there. Omkar looks very trim today, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, Madhukar is there. That's good. Good to see most of you guys. Okay, okay. Some of some of you opening up the camera has a great. Yeah. Okay, good then. Uh, thanks to see all. Karthik also available there. Great there. Okay. Right. Ah, Seema is there. Okay, good to see. Good to see. Good to see. Good there. Uh, why I asked to open up the camera is sometimes I get a feel that I'm talking to a human being. Right. If, uh, if not, I'm always the monitor. <laughs> okay, great, great. Uh, thanks for that. Please get back to mood mode. Please put your camera off. Okay, that's great. I appreciate it. I'm going to quickly share my screen. Kindly get to mute mode. I appreciate it. Good there. Bunch of people there. We're going to have a good learning today. And if you've not had your lunch, please pick up your lunch plate and sit with me. Make sure you're putting in mute mode, don't mind. Okay, um, okay, session is going to run for next uh, one, 1 1.5 hours or one and a half hours. Um, I, you may get some background sound because as a lockdown is slightly released, there is a big construction work happening next to my block area. So machines are working, laborers are getting job, but we're also getting some noise, so it's fine. 
So I kindly filter those sounds and start listening to the subject. Good there. Uh, we have covered a few knowledge areas in the last few weeks, and uh, the intention here is to touch points, key points. We may not go line by line, but we'll touch the key points. On some of the questions, we will see. These are the questions you would have seen already, but we will see as a group, and we'll start discussing about the questions, how to look at the exam question. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, let's get started with the quality. Let's get there. Uh -oh. Yep. Okay. Whenever you talk about the quality, certain things comes to our mind. When I say certain things, um, it's not only for project management. Anything you do in your life, we will start seeing how to bring up the quality, right? And when we, when we talk about it, there are a few countries which set up a standard for quality in the world. And I know some of you remember certain country names always pop up. Whenever you think something about the quality on any product or any service, Quickly, certain names comes to your mind. Do anybody remember any country name comes to your mind when you talk about quality? Okay, somebody is giving chat message. Japan, okay. Um, yeah, I know Japan, Germany coming up, right? Mostly. Mostly, we always think quality, it comes to your mind in Japan and Germany. It means they have the highest standard. Doesn't mean other countries don't do. They do have it. But these are the countries who are able to show to the world how best the quality can be done, right? And they even, in fact, spoke much about prevention part, right? This is very important argument. Why I pulled up these countries is they're too much focused on prevention rather cure. Now, what is the meaning here is you start the quality in the initial stages of your project development. That is on requirement gathering, designing stage, or value analysis, you do a lot more in the beginning stage of the project, rather you do once a product is out for testing, right? We have the quality department, we do the testing process, right? That's good to have testing, I'm not saying no, but prevention is very important. Now, how do you do prevention? For that, first of all, you should have a clarity of the requirement, what the customer is looking for, and also you have a broader mindset of thinking in a multiple dimension. It shouldn't be so much narrowed down, it should be multiple dimension taking multiple factors, right? Sometimes we, we buy some product and when we start using it, you will feel that, oh my God, it could have been this way. A water bottle can be opened at the top like this. Something will start seeing that why it's not that way. And that's because they didn't think about the factor of how can we give the best quality to the customer. Quality talks about the standard. It talks about the requirement for the customer, which should be met, right? Okay, I can see some smiley picture with the country name there. Of course, that country too have amazing quality. We cannot deny that. I can see somebody put China with a smiley. Uh, we cannot deny that they have a clear stakeholder management. If you are an A grade stakeholder, they give an A grade quality to you. If you are a B grade stakeholder, they give a B grade quality to you. <clears throat> Even the countries are fighting to one another. That's a different story. When it comes to manufacturing and quality, they do maintain great standards. Without that, you cannot survive in this world for the last two decades, right? It has meaning behind that. But again, we see from our lens, but we have to change the specs and see how they look out you. That's the first lot of pressure, right? Good there. Anyway, thanks for the points. Now, prevention uh, is better than cure. I always insist this point in any of the projects. Ah, thanks, Aishwarya. Uh, I always talk about this in the project meetings, telling that being preventive than being the cure point. It's good to talk, but how do you do that? You can go ahead and look out to your family life, right? Uh, I generally put this example of how do you bring up your children? At the age of 15, I cannot expect my son or daughter to be the best person in the society if I don't give them best knowledge or best discipline at the age of two, three, and four, and five, right? They tell that right within five years, you have to bring up the best things to them. That's prevention. You don't start there, it's going to hit back. We know this in our family life, but when it comes to project, what happens is people somehow expect the quality team will fix the issue. Quality team will not fix the issue. Quality team will finger point you, hey, there's a mistake. But who's the, who, who takes the responsibility? The senior management, the project manager, the leader, the business analyst, the customer, everybody all together. They call it as a total quality management, right? You do all as a whole. We cannot rely only on the quality department. That's a message. Right, so that doing good will help us. Now what I do is I'll put the next point. To improve this, there is some discussion came up in the world some decades back. And there is someone called dimming. I believe some of you are aware of dimming cycle. 
So Demenkai cycle talks about plan, do, check, act. Oh my God, it's so simple, right? I know it's so simple. Plan something, do it, check the process and product and act accordingly to change it. Whichever is so easy to read, easy to forget, right? So plan, do, check, act is a process followed by many of the Western countries and specifically Japan and Germany where they appreciated deeming cycle highly. They keep this continuous process running on to improve. If anybody coming from an agile world, you keep talking about a iterative and incremental way, it's nothing but plan, do, check, act. This is there for more than decades of time. So nothing new we innovated with agile concepts. It is there for so many years. But again, it was in the manufacturing industry. See, we were in the uh, revolution of manufacturing industries for so many years. Now we move to the era of IT, where we talk about more of it. Um, information technology improvement. But again, the concept stays the same. How quickly you can check and out, that's very vital. How frequently you do that, that's very vital. I believe some of you are aware that Toyota maintains the highest standard of quality in whatever they deliver. They do have some problems, but they have to come out of it because of some very specific way of improving. There is a specific person called Tai Chi Hono, I know the name looks very crazy, Tai Chi Ho, no? Okay, he is the one who brought out the best system in Toyota to improve the quality standards. Maybe I'll play one video to you to show that what made them to be the top standard even when there was a multiple recessions came up. You may be surprised, Shriram, I'm facing recession this year or 2008 was a recession time. No, recession is there every 10, 15 years. It's happening for centuries. If you're surprised about pandemic, the pandemic is not new. It's happening multiple times. It have killed crores of people in so many decades back. It's happening. But anything what you do, it's nothing new here. It's all happening. But how these companies are able to survive for 100 years, or more than 70 years or 80 years, and still give the highest quality, right? They don't cut the corners because certain things are not happening in the world properly. Oh, the whole world is dying. Let me cut the quality here and there. No, it won't work. Whatever happens in the world, we will deliver quality, right? So what I do is I'll quickly show one video and then in that video, there is a specific point. It comes in where they tell how they improve the quality. Let us see your observation skill on this video and catch up that point where they talk about that specific area where they improve quality. The word they goes to Toyota, right? I'm going to play this. Let's see. Are you ready for the video? Let me get a some couple of yes, then I'll go for the video. Yeah. Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Some people are already there. Okay. Yeah. Good guy. Good guy. Just making all alert there. That's it. Let's go to the video. Tai Chi Ho No. It's here. Yep. I know the sounds are not coming. Please wait. Let me introduce the sound. Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks guys. Everybody gave a yes there. Let's play on this video. It's a Bloomberg video about a Toyota. Toyota knows how to make cars. It does it so well, it became the first company to produce more than 10 million a year. Its success is rooted in a special system and began what's now known as lean manufacturing, an ethos emulated by companies around the world to make products faster, cheaper and better. Here's how Toyota changed the way we make things. Following the Second World War, Japan was left in a precarious economic position. Steel and other metals are scarce. Already disadvantaged by lacking natural resources, materials were hard to come by and companies had to be creative to compete. Toyota's founder, Sikichi Toyoda, had started a loom business, but it was his son Kichiro who founded the motor company in 1937. They were used to working within narrow margins. As the shortage of materials increased during the war, the number of headlamps on its Model K truck was reduced to one, and it only had brakes on one of the axles. The turning point for Toyota's production system would come in the early 50s, when Kichiro's cousin Eiji would travel to the US with a veteran loom machinist, Taichi Ono. They visited Ford's River Rouge plant in Michigan and were impressed by the scale of the operation, but knew that in cash-strapped Japan, companies didn't have the resources for such a system. Having months' worth of stock sitting in a warehouse would tie up precious capital they didn't have. 
Instead, what truly impressed Ono was a visit to a supermarket, a Piggly Wiggly, according to legend. Japan didn't really have self-service stores at this point, and he was struck by the way customers could choose exactly what they wanted, when they wanted. He decided to model his production line on a similar idea. With the supermarket formula, only enough parts were produced in the first phase to replace what was used in the second, and so on. This is where the just-in-time system really took shape. Toyota was able to eliminate much of the waste in Ford's system, making smaller numbers of parts to be used when it needed them, allowing the company to operate on a tighter budget. As part of this, Ono developed Kanban, a sign-based scheduling method which shows goods in, goods in production, and goods out. It's now seen as a precursor to barcodes. Ono and Toyota also noticed that American car companies were still employing many of Henry Ford's early production techniques. They kept operations at full tilt in order to maximize efficiencies of scale, but then had to repair defective cars after they rolled off the line. Ono believed this caused more problems and didn't encourage workers or machines to stop making the mistake. So he placed a cord above every station which any worker could pull to stop the entire assembly if they spotted a problem. The whole team would work on it to prevent it from happening again. As teams identified more problems, the number of errors began to drop dramatically. Combined with a culture of continuous incremental improvement called Kaizen, the Toyota production system built a brand known for making reliable and affordable cars. But Toyota was also getting good at producing cars quickly. In 1962, the company had produced 1 million vehicles. By 1972, they'd produced 10 million. It was around that time that the efficiencies of their factories enabled Toyota to produce a car every 1.6 man-hours, much lower than their competitors in the US, Sweden and Germany. And as the oil crisis of the decade sent gas prices higher, cheap-to-run Japanese cars became much more appealing to Americans, whose powerful but gas-guzzling vehicles suddenly became very expensive to run. Today, Toyota has made over 250 million vehicles. Others have looked to them to learn the lessons of lean. Combining craft with mass production, avoiding waste while striving for constant improvement. Boeing is perhaps the most famous, restructuring a plant to better suit TPS. Intel is another long-time lean ambassador and is exploring the principles in the context of AI and the Internet of Things. A Canadian hospital even used Toyota's system to decrease wait times in its ER. The Toyota production system changed not just how cars are made globally, but how we approach making things full stop. It also showed that there's always a better way to make a product. Yeah, that's uh, I believe it's a good video. Of course, the guy made a good video there. So what's the catch here? Did anybody watch out what made them to improve the quality? Quickly listen from some of you here. You can go with the mic. Just in time. Sorry? Just in time, technique. Okay, that's one. Just in time. And uh, one more. Go ahead. Uh, the Based and fault, fault. Ties and technology. Ties and technique. Okay, okay. These are techniques, I agree. Something else also there. Continuous improvement. Somebody's touching the point. Go ahead. In this and ban, place, can man waste elimination. Produce small compress and fix errors at the assembly line. I think uh, Nairkar is touching the point. I'll come to the point. In the video, at the second minute, there will be a place they'll show the aerial view of the conveyor belt or assembly line moving on. Now, what they brought it is a car in the assembly line moving on, and each car will have few people working on. Okay, if out of five, six cars on the assembly line, car number three has some trouble, some issue. Now, what will happen is they call something called pull track. They will go to pull the point and they will stop the assembly line moving forward further if there is one quality issue in one car. Now, what happens is once they stop the assembly line, all the employees of that floor has to come there and look at that problem and they have to fix it collectively. Once that's fixed, then only the assembly line will move. It is not about your car has a problem, my car don't have a problem, let me work, and you keep fixing the problem. No, that's not the case. If there is a problem, let everybody assemble there, fix it. It's a time-eating process. But gradually, it started showing great amount of results. 
Now, what happens is they know that if there is a problem, assembly line will stop. If assembly line stops, everybody has to get back and see the problem, fix it, right? This is a very famous system. I believe you ought to watch that video, right? They show some uh, top view, some cartoons there. They move around together and fix the issue and then get back to their track. And if you watched it, <clears throat> that's a very interesting factor. It is not only about uh, root cause analysis, about Kaizen, Kanban. Okay, these are just some methods in place. But the mindset of fixing as a whole is very important. I feel many managers are driven by the methodologies. They talk about Scrum, they talk about Kanban, they talk about PMP, Prince2. They worry too much on that. Rather worrying too much on what actually to be done at the floor. That's very much a success point. And if you see that, that's what Japanese did for so many years. Don't worry too much on the process side, working on how to make it the better shop, right? Anyway, um, coming back to this point, these all as an essence in the PMP concept, which talks about how can you improve continuously? Do you do plan, do check act, and total quality management, Kaizen principle, or you talk about just in time. I believe you got the concept of just in time. In the video, you would have seen something called Piggly Wiggly. Right? Uh, I'm not sure how many of you read about this. This guy, Piggly Wiggly, is the owner, and this owner worked in one of the stores. He is a guy who keep on throwing ideas. Uh, he goes and talks to his CEO, the company where he was working, tell him that, sir, we'll do like this, the company will come up well. And they keep ignoring him. At uh, one stage, he said that, sir, I found a great idea. The head said that you are being suspended or you are being moved out of the company. Before that, like this guy said that, I have already resigned when I got this idea. So I'm moving out of the company. That's where he came out. And he came out with an idea that, why don't people choose their preferred items from the store rather someone is giving to them? That's where the birthplace of departmental store, what we enjoy now, right? That's what the Piggly Wiggly concept. From Piggly Wiggly concept, Tai Chi Hono picked up something called just in time. Use only the product at just in time media, okay? So there's a big story behind that. Whenever you find some time, read about it. It's so interesting where it came up, right? Anyway, that's not the exam question for you in PMP. Anyway, <laughs> I just thought of putting you that uh, idea. See, anything you learn, learn from the history, it will be so nice and you won't forget it, right? If you read only with a book concept, you may miss the concept. Okay, getting back. Uh, okay, um, something about uh, gold plating, which I have to talk about in quality. Uh, okay, I'm sure some of you would have heard this thing called gold plating. Gold plating and something called the scope creeps, right? These are some problem. Um, now, gold plating is uh, one of the problem. I'll tell you it's a problem, okay? And uh, many organizations these days say that, come on, excite your customer. Make your customer something delightful. The words are so good. But again, they say that if you're trying to go out of what the customer is looking out for, sometimes you miss the track of what you have to deliver. Not sometimes, most of the time. Uh, if you look at this content, I just picked up from another book. I don't care what mother says. Food does taste better with a gold-plated silver bear, right? Food tastes better with the silver spoons. <laughs> okay, the point is gold plating will not close your mistakes or problems when you deliver, don't deliver it properly. The quality is not there. Whenever I talk about this gold plating uh, creeping, I remember one example which I keep giving to people. Um, for example, there is a customer who is looking out for a new Honda vehicle, a customized Honda vehicle, okay? I'm taking car as an example because the last 100 years, human beings are so much attached with anything moved by wheels. Right? It may be men or women. So I'm trying to put the example towards the car so your brain can map faster. Now, what happened is um, this person, person A, goes to the Honda showroom or Honda center of design center, tells him, hey, I want a customized vehicle. It should have amazing quality like this, that, that all recommend is given. The car is ready. When the car is ready, what happened is the car is getting delivered. The customer sees the car. And when he went in and said, the car looks amazing. AC cooling is wow. Sound system is great. The dashboard looks amazingly great. Then he slowly looks up. There is a sunroof inside the car. The customer feels, wow, what is this, man? I didn't ask for it. So the Honda guy says, sir, it's a, it's a gift for you. So we want to give you, okay? What do you call this, the person giving it now? Is it uh, within the scope or out of the scope? Or can you call this gold plating? Can you call this as a gold plating? Okay, it's a gold plating. Yeah. Okay, now the guy is happy. The customer is happy. We're not saying anything. Customer feels, Ooh, wow, 
wow his kids are feeling wow dad is amazing you chose the right place to book a car okay all are good there things goes well took the car went home now he is driving his car in a in a in a mountain area and it is a monsoon season the rain is pouring badly heavily right now he was able to see the rain the wiper is going on the car after a few minutes he can feel the rain 4d effect what is the 4d effect here the water started dropping from there okay he is feeling the rain on his shoulder now this guy will tell the guy who is driving the car will tell the extra feature is failing or the whole honda is failing what will be the comment or dialogue can anybody make a comment on that honda failing <laughs> honda failed he won't tell that he or she will not tell what they got extra they will talk overall it's not working honda is bad quality is low right so you lose a reputation you lose a value just because you add something where you don't find to test it properly where you don't to see the standards properly because you're so much focused on the main activity you would have spent only little activity time for the extra added feature first of all that is not needed at all which doesn't fit into your model now the second problem can happen now what happened is the same guy using the car for a while and now he is ordering one other car for his sister now his sister's car got delivered now she is coming to see the car ac is cooling is good and every feature is good now she is trying to look little up there is no sunroof now the customer will ask the question why there is no sunroof now you are setting an unwanted expectation to the customer that whenever i ask five this guy will give sixth item right it happens at least in indian homes i've seen it if i go to a place i meet my aunt home i go to the aunt home i sit there for the moment i go there aunt how are you uncle how are you things are going good the moment she will ask would you like to have a cup of coffee i will say no now what my aunt will do still she will go to kitchen and prepare the coffee then what is the meaning of saying no we do tell with the word no because we know that they going to say do it anyway right it is something a mismatch here if you say something you do something which is needed i remember sometime i worked with some other country people i remember it i don't want to name the country but when i say no it's no you won't get it once they ask me do you want to have a cool drinks i said no either they'll bring it back nothing happened next to 25 minutes or 30 minutes nothing was brought then i have to literally ask hey can you get some cool drink oh it's there go and take it now the point is be clear and specific on what it is if you go and out it's creeping out sometimes it can work out most of the times it may fail gold plating happens many times in the project team we have seen in it or non it in it it's very common some people add the feature automatically on their own without even checking out with the team the feasibility and that creates lots and lots of trouble whereas in a non uh, it industry like of a manufacturing or a construction you do something which unwanted and is going to create a lot of trouble then you are in problem so what the books of project management talks about meet the requirements of the customer that sets the quality you no need to overdo something on that area okay that's one of the concept i'm sure some of you would have faced this kind of situation do anybody face this kind of gold plating in an organization do anybody have a story on that ah oh, ashik says in manufacturing industry okay yeah it happens it happens a lot of places sometimes it feels so hard why they do that but some people feel it it is an added advantage why should we miss it let's use it right but it's not a right thing okay there is a question here let's see your uh, thought process go through this question it's a very simple question try to answer it let's discuss about it can i answer okay quickly i'll answer johnny's question once i get to the answers johnny i'm coming to your question okay answers coming up ah quite good let everybody give a try don't feel shy for giving answer give a try nothing wrong every answer you get 50 dollars when you get your salary package okay that's good most of you made answer c i can see some of them made a okay it's a very simple question quality is 
Okay, what is quality? Quality can be of multiple things. Let's understand this question. Okay, they want to understand what do you mean by quality? Uh, let me go one by one. Meeting and exceeding the customer expectation. I may not go with the word exceeding, which is not a quality parameter. Adding extras to make the customer happy. Extras again will not suit up. Okay. The degree to which the project meets the requirement may be the answer, but let's see the next one also. Confirmance to management objectives. No, right? Management objectives may be anything. We don't want to confirm with them. So if elimination technique, you can cut this, cut this, cut this, and choose C as an answer. I saw 95% of the people made a C as answer. If anybody went out of C, you can look into that. Okay, why don't this can be an answer, right? I can see one of them saying all of the above as answer. All of the above may not be an answer. Uh, first of all, the logic doesn't fit in here. And in the PMP exams, you will always get this kind of four choices. You have to choose one among them. Many people get confused. Uh, Shidam, uh, I, you know what? I, I can remove two answers, but two looks very closer. So how to choose? It is something like uh, you go to a store and you want to buy your mobile phones. You have four mobile phones in front of you. Two will be totally eliminated because of some features, but two will be very close. Sometimes your instinct will tell that this looks good, pick it up, right? Sometimes in examination, believe your instinct. There is no specific one cellular line bullet to answer, but your instinct will tell that as per the situation, answer C looks closer. Trust it and choose answer. I am not trying to do some astrological stuff here, but I'm telling that believe your uh, instinct because you would have read the books at least one fully, and also you practice a lot of questions, and also you come with more than three years of experience. When you come with that experience, believe that experience, trust your experience, trust the book what you read, and then choose the answer that will solve the problem. But again, look at the keywords, what I'm showing them. Exceeding, no. Extra, no. Management, no. Elimination technique. And then choose meets, which is meeting the requirements of the customer, right? That goes answer. Hope that's the right answer. Most of you agree with me. Let me also check from the books what's the right answer. Oh, yeah, that's the right answer. Good there, good participation. Quickly, I will take one question from a journey. Journey, right? I saw a question here. What's the difference between scope creep and gold plating? Okay, both, both are like brothers and sisters, very close to each other. Uh, what happened here is, I'll go back. Scope creep is something going beyond what has been asked for. You go out of the scope. See, a scope says come out with certain things to be completed. For example, this training program has a goal of communicating on quality management. I cannot talk about COVID related problem or what World Health Organization is doing. I can talk about it for maybe one minute or two minutes. I cannot talk that for 25 minutes. Some may like, some may feel, what the hell is happening here? I thought he will explain something, but he's talking something else. You're creeping out the overall idea of what to be done. It's not done it going away unintentionally or intentionally. Both can happen, right? And goal plating, something you add extra features to impress people and you get into trouble. Creep is something a customer gives more requirements and you add more requirements and going out of the way, out of the way of what they want actually. But again, goal plating can be something you add the features which is not needed, but you still feel that it can do some impression with the customer, right? Both are more or less closer, but it's its own specific meaning when you get closer. Scope creep generally happens uh, when the customer comes up with more thought process rather going out of what we discussed in SOW. What is SOW? Do anybody know what is SOW? Uh, statement of works. Fantastic. Statement of work. Oh, great, great answers. Statement of work is a very important document which talks about the scope, what we want to do. And if you start going away from that, you are in trouble, right? Good there, thanks for the confirmation. Let's get into some more subject here. Okay, uh, subject here, I have a lot of content here on the screen. Don't get carried away. Only a few messages I want to convey. Quality is a small unit in the book. Quality try to do only three things. One is they want to plan how to do the quality, then manage the quality, then control the quality. Uh, the same thing I have to put in another image. Uh, early days, it was called as quality assurance. 
even today in some of the manufacturing industry they use the word qa quality assurance if you look at the image you get a feel that they try to improve the process when you see this kind of sign may look like a process right it's a process improvement they keep a watch on it they do audit audit what is audit audit means checking are we following the process properly now the question is you know what is process what is product that's what i'm going to explain now right in manage quality we try to improve the process the process of translating the quality management plan into executable quality see every organization will have certain process to be followed to meet the quality standards right maybe six sigma to be implemented or we will have um, qmc our own quality management system control we will follow it's all nothing but a standards to be followed or principles to be followed so that the output comes up really well now what is output output is called as a product product is a outcome of what we are going to deliver here they will do inspection it here will do inspection what we did here let me use a razor go 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 ahead go ahead okay ah uh, okay here we do audit very simple in quality is two things we will do one is we will do audit audit is checking out whether we are improving the process and other side is quality control talks about inspection how do we improve the product these two happens parallelly to explain this a little more better probably we'll go a little more deep inside okay for that we have to understand few more factors there is something called um, cost of conformance cost of non conformance if you see these factors just a minute Uh, I'm trying to hide some stuff. Zoom features, new features are good. Okay, now I get all the stuff. Okay, great. So now, what happened is uh, the person called uh, Phil Crossby. He came out with some new concepts by those years, telling that, hey, how can we improve the quality? Something he added very interesting factor, telling that. cost of conformance cost of non conformance maybe you can read the bottom line here what they say about that but ideally they say that the cost of conformance should be lower than the cost of non conformance non conformance nothing but going in the customer hand and it is failing see if you have anything training expenses on your company for the cost of quality it's well and good in case you're going for the training in case you have some product specific for the quality check spending money on that it's fine testing cost fine destructive cost it's fine scrap cost that's also okay i'll tell you but there is one area which is so so risky the area which is very risky is external failure cost you don't want your product to fail in the hands of the customer if it fails on the hands of the customer that's your last day count day it's a last day it may be anything it may be uh, any eatable it may be the um, automobiles it may be any mobile what you use if it fails on your hands it's enough because it will start dropping something of your organization can someone tell me what will get dropped off if it fails on a customer hand reputation reputation no. what is the right word for Still. trust reputation trust great great Somebody put the right. Durai puts the right one. Goodness. Good sir. So whatever you all said is absolutely right. Thanks for the answers. But if you want to put everything together, they call it as a goodwill, right? You remember the goodwill, right? Goodwill is not only for the product, for a human being as an individual, uh, for a company. Everybody has a goodwill, right? You should have a goodwill. If not, you can't survive for a long time in your life. Goodwill is very important. Your family should have a goodwill at you. Your corporate should have a goodwill at you. a corporate as a whole people should have a goodwill now a country is suffering a lot to get the goodwill from other countries in the world right you all watching the newspapers and news channels happening a country is suffering a lot because of trust issue a trust issue starts a transparency problem starts how the goodwill will happen people start trusting you you have a more transparency it's going to hit in the long run not immediately after 10 years some country will disappear in the map they won't be there at all the problem is you don't have a trust and transparency happening it's a problem now that hits your goodwill badly when the goodwill hits badly don't think people are so calm they won't do anything they will come back that will be so bad that you cannot come back at all in the market many companies fail like that 
many companies thought that it's okay somehow without testing without proper work we will deliver it let them use it once and it's okay it fails it's fine if you leave that that you are in trouble you are going to have a big 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 trouble right okay that's about the cost of confirmance anyway that's a big topic on that area let's see one question to see your brain how it's working check out this part all the followings are tools and techniques of control quality aha uh -huh. to control the quality some tools are being used one is not the tool i know it's a tough question but give a shot oh 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 tough question anybody who read the book already maybe you'll answer it if not it is can be little tough first of all in the question you see something called tools and techniques okay so first of all you should understand what are the tools and techniques here if not it's going to be tough just a minute i'm not seeing the chat window okay i see most of them gave answer as b some gave us a d some gave us a some as c oh my god this team has all the answers man a b c d <laughs> all has come out okay for information inspection is a tool right all of the following are tools and techniques okay inspection is a tool to control the quality you check the product right you see uh, each item by inspection what it is cost of quality look like a concept so let's wait for it i i doubt on this answer histogram histogram is again a tool for technique to watch out the control quality to see is are we following the quality parameters for the process improvement and for the product improvement we use histogram diagram where i have a bar chart which shows where we highly fail where we have a lower failure so you see the quality standards happening it's a tool right now i believe most of you agree with me cause and effect diagram also called as a fish bowl diagram also called as ishikawa diagram also called as yy diagram also i don't know only these name many names i know okay now this as another tool now these are tools to see things are working there is one which is not a tool that's what the question says except i am not worried if you made a wrong answer for this question but i'll be worried if you did not read this word because in pmp exams this word is very important your brain will start twisting what will happen is i'll tell you an exam hall exam hall after pay, paying triple 5 dollars you will be in so much eagerness to answer it properly and clear the exam so sometimes the eagerness you will miss this last word or when you read it you don't read it with the intention now what will happen is all the following are tools and techniques of control quality quickly your brain will tell that inspection is a point you choose answer put in next question but if you read this properly they are talking about except it means out of the four three should be right one should be except most of the pmp question whenever they use except you can quickly eliminate three and find the one but it will take time to practice it if hey, somebody is not in mute mode if you don't mind can you please get to mute mode yeah thanks for that right that's good shami thanks for the answers inspection root cause histogram that's great isn't histogram a tool to for identifying resources used over a particular period of time how is control quality tool right that's good you are using that in resource management not here right we are talking about control quality in control quality we use it as a histogram where we plot all the test cases happened i believe when you read the books of pmp you can see that uh, there are seven tools used here one of the tool is histogram where they plot list of errors or some of the improvement areas which we can work on so it will be used for manage quality and control quality both the players will use the same tool histogram it's their part of it oh god maybe you can read in the quality you'll get an idea great there i'm still getting some sounds there anybody want to go to mute please uh jennifer don't mind i'm putting in a mute still i can't do it okay great there okay let's keep moving on um that's good the ah, b's answer very good are all tools that can be used in control quality cost of quality is a part of plan management okay great that's great good answer let's talk about manage quality few factors here um 
Okay. Oh, hope car. Hope you got it now. It's, you don't need to confuse. Histogram is so old too. It's there for so many years. My father would have used. My grandfather would have used. A very tool old tool. Just put the details on the tool to see. Are we able to get this thing? Histogram can be used in any place. Don't get confused. In resource, it's coming. Why it is not coming here? It's a kind of tool to show the bar chart. Right? Bar chart is very common. Even for the COVID issues happening, they'll put a bar chart. How many countries? What all happened? Which country? What happened? So just read about bar chart in Google. You will get the clarity. Right? That's very important. No, no, it's for all places. Thanks, Omkar. Let's move on. Okay, I brought something about the managed quality. Uh, why I put this picture here is quality should not be taught only from a corporate perspective. A group outside the project team, such as a quality department, often handles this as a work on project. You keep checking out, right? In, let's take an example from your home where your mom prepares something. You believe that she always maintains the quality standards in place. You no need to something go and check or anything, right? Whenever your mom does something, you believe it. Even though you get the adulterated product in the market. But it comes through your mom or your spouse. You believe it and you have it. You don't even question it, because there is a quality process in place. They clean it properly. They cook it. They bake it properly, and then they serve to you. So you believe the process being followed. But to cook, take care of the process. It's a whole family system. Some family you can see that you enter the home. You can see the home how quality they made it. It will be shabby shape, right? You don't even want to go to the home next time. Some home you visit, they'll be very neat and clean. The way they maintain the life they live, you feel wow, good. For having a neat and healthy life doesn't mean you have to be rich. Somebody has a wrong assumption. You have a rich, big, posh home, then I'll be so neat and clean. Not needed. If you can't keep your one room neat and clean, it tells how you are going to maintain the villa that are given to you, right? So it's a process in place. How it happens? You get from your parents. You get from your friends. You get from your spouse. You get from your children. Your children educate you. Dad, don't put there. That's wrong, right? So that's a process system. Keep watch out. Now, in project management, we have a team called Quality Assurance. We keep a look at: Are we following the process properly? If not, there will be a guidance continuously given on. Now, the question is: How do they set the standards? It's an industry standard. Sometimes we invite somebody called PMO to give some of the standards of our organization. By the way, anybody know who is PMO? You would have a clarity who's PMO? Project management office. Uh, they right. provide methods and technologies right. in our organization. Great answer. Thank you. I can see Kavita, Shami, Giri. Great. Thanks, guys. So PMO is a project management office who will have something called lessons learned. If you heard about lessons learned, okay. So we always call it as a LL. Lessons learned is a record of information a company will maintain. You can go and approach them. Hey guys, can you give me some lessons learned of the previous projects? How they maintain the quality? Probably we'll reutilize it. No need to reinvent the wheel all the time. Your company will have a standard. See, if your company is in the market for last ten years, I'm sure they will have some process with them. Some of you working in a company which is hundred years old, which is nearly thirty years old, or sometimes fifty years old. You're working in such a massive company, and definitely your PMOs will have all the information. You can go and check with them what are the quality standards they are following. Now you may ask me the question, Shiram, why should I learn that man? You should. Being in the leadership track, you should have knowledge. These all the technical knowledge needed for project management. Many people have a doubt. What is meant technical? I thought it's a technology. Technology is different. Technical is different. This is technical knowledge. You should have technical knowledge. What to be done to make a project work efficiently? Good there. I, uh, whenever I quote about the examples of quality, I recall about the airport system. I'm sure some of you would have done this, so waited like this crazily, feeling bad about this process, right? This is all nothing but the process improvement. When you have a process like this, it gives a good product like this. What is a product? You travel happily without a worry that your flight will get into trouble. There is no trouble in your flight, right? The little one see how happy is sleeping. Now this can happen means this product should come out. This process should be in place. Who maintain this process? There is a team called Quality Assurance, right? And also that be a continuous process. Don't think that they define it. They live with that. No. Even today, something new will be introduced in airport. Airport is one of the ideal example to understand about quality improvement. 
because they keep evolving, keep improving. Look at the situation about the COVID happening now. Post the COVID, airport will bring some other new process that's going to be related different to make sure everybody travel with safety. Okay, and uh, when I talk about that, I want to bring something on fishbone diagram. I know most of you did not see on the right side, you are seeing only on the left side because you all like this fish, right? Very good. Let's see the right side now. Your brain has other side also. See the picture or diagram. Now, whenever there's a problem, you put the problem and you start investigating in a fishbone format, which is called as a people, process, equipment, material, environment, management. There is no mandatory, only these names can be used. There are some other tags that can be added. The goal of fishbone diagram is you do a root analysis. What is root analysis? Going deep inside and seeing what's the problem there. That's very vital. That's what some countries are trying to find the problem of this virus. They call us root cause analysis. When you do root cause analysis, you'll go to the deep of the system and see that why it has happened so that you can avoid it in future, okay? For that, we need a keyword which is called as honesty. We need something called transparency. It's true, only when it's there, this will work. When somebody give a wrong message, the root cause analysis will fail, right? That's very important. That's a problem happening in some big countries now, right? They're trying to find the root cause, it's not happening. It's, it's getting in trouble there. The same happens in the project. Uh, some of the resource will not willing to share the information, there's a trouble. That's why we use something called interpersonal skills. I'm not sure whether you read that in PMP books. There is something called interpersonal skills, very important for the leadership role. When you're in leadership role, you should have the interpersonal skill. You should know where to talk to what, where to keep your mouth shut, right? Or at least you should know how to influence people or negotiate with the people. It's very vital. Good that I like this fish very much, so I thought I'd put a picture. Anybody know the name of this fish? What is What variety of fish is this? I know some fish lovers are here. To, 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 to shark, huh? whale, shark, starfish. <laughs> Nobody knows the fish name. Okay, let's keep the fish name as a Suresh. I don't know the name. Okay, let's move on. Okay, uh, the next part in quality is something we talk about 80 20 principle. I believe this guy was in COVID. Look at the beard he has, so big. Okay, so now uh, he's called Belford. Pareto, a very nice person. He's an engineer and he's a great economist, a lot of factors. He's, he wears a lot of hat. Okay. Um, economics, he found something, a study of income distribution, okay, in Italy in uh, some years back in the 18th century. He came out with a thought saying that 80% of the assets and property are holded by 20% of the people. Okay, very interesting. Once they found that, they found, hey, why don't we try this in other areas? And other areas also, they found the same principle of 80-20 happening, right? I used to tell that whenever you go to your um, dress wardrobe, you will see you wear the same 80% of the dresses, on, right? You don't you know, touch the 20% area. In fact, uh, most of the time, you prefer the same dress, something being ignored, right? 80-20 principle happens at 80% situation, you wear the same stuff. You miss certain items, which is the last row. In same way in quality also, there are certain things I talk about it. 80% of the problem could be because of the 20% of the issues or a cause. Now we have to do some root analysis on this problem so that you can be happy on the 80% of the situation, right? Now you can question me, hey, uh, Shiram, do you mean the Italian guy was talking about quality? No, he didn't talk about quality. There's a guy called Joseph Juron. He adopted this Welford Pareto principle and he brought something called Pareto principle. That's what came in. If anybody want to read about it, Google Joseph Jura and read about it. Okay, there are a lot of good standards he brought out where he adopted this Welford principle and brought it here. But I don't see these questions coming up in PMP exam these days because in Pimbox 6th edition, they removed KT20 principle. I don't know why. But when I go to agile training programs, I'm seeing these two are used. One is Fishbone and Welford Pareto's 80-20 principle. But still, if you go to Rita book, in the Rita book, you will see this. Somebody is asking, who's at Rita? Rita is a good book for Pimbak. It's not a Rita, my friend, it's a book, okay? Okay, let's go. Let's move on to the next stage. There's a question, let's see how you're thinking. OK, 
Okay, what time is it coming up? Oh, D, 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 O, Mishes, O, 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 zero. Okay, okay. Yeah, we have around 30 people, only, only eight people are answering. What about other people? You're not uh, reading the question. Uh huh. Somebody is saying B. Okay, good. Let's answer. Everybody answer it. Let's see your thought process. Only, only when you answer it, your brain will start working. Don't think only in your brain. Put an answer. Ah, uh, answer coming up. I'm seeing the ratio percentage. How much it comes? Okay. Good. 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 Okay. Good. I can see 98% went to the D. One person. I will tell 99% went to the D. One person went to the B. Okay. Okay. Let's read the question one more time. Let us a little better. See, now the question is asking, you are managing a project in just in time environment. Okay, I think I just showed the video about uh, Japanese guys where they call it JIT. JIT. Okay, JIT is so interesting factor. This will require more attention because the amount of inventory in such an environment will be generally what? Inventory stock. See, the moment you see JIT, JIT is very famous concept. Okay, in software also we have JIT. If you go to any framework, anybody from I mean, IT industry, if you go to Java framework or Microsoft.NET frameworks, they have a JIT, a JIT concept there, just in time compiler, they call it as, right? It is there. Somebody said, you know, you know what? IT industries are advanced, man. They're using JIT concept. They're so great. I had to tell them, well, guys, this is there 50 years back or 60 years back. Don't think IT is so advanced. IT is just using those concepts, okay? So manufacturing is so advanced. Those guys are so brainy those days. They're just copy pasting whatever they did. That nothing to be so happy. Now, uh, inventory is nothing but a stock, stock of items which you maintain. Now, when you say JIT, JIT means get just what you want, right? On the spot. That case, your inventory may become zero, right? I know one person under the D, maybe you will agree with me now. I don't think it will have a percentage that is zero. See, some of your apartments and villa area or block area where you live, you have a lot of stores next to your home. The more vegetable vendors and of groceries available, you will slow down your stocking habit. What do you do? You go buy fresh vegetables. You see that? Some people will run to get to the morning hours of fresh vegetables, right? They don't stock it. Imagine the days from 40 years back, not even 40 years, maybe 35 years or 40 years back. Those days, you won't have these many vendors in the market. So what happens is your parents or elderly or grandparents, they go to a store, totally they will stock it. They'll put it at home and they'll use it regularly, right? That's how they get 100 kg rice bags. I believe you would have seen in school, there's 100 kg rice bags. These days, you don't see 100 kg rice bags. You see only 5 kg or 10 kg. The other reason is people move to wheat. That's a different concept. But the point is uh, that the stocking system will go down. Now, now, in quality, they find this factor as a very important factor of not stocking it. When you use just in time, you don't need to stock and you don't have unwanted or unused material or rusted material for a long time, right? That's how they use the concept. By the way, when you learn this framework book or PMP, learn from multiple domains. Don't see from your domain alone. If you are from pharma, don't see from there. If you are from construction, don't see from there. If you're from IT industry, don't see from there. Try to see from other domains. Your domain, you can learn anytime because you're working every day. But when you see from other domain, your learning will be faster so that your exam question you can attend really well. Right? That's one of the secrets. Coo, coo, coo. Zero inventory. Fantastic. Good there. I can see a lot of answers. Thanks, guys, for all your answers. Anyway, let's confirm the book answer. Ah, book two says the same. Little or no inventory. Very good. Let's move. Oh, sorry. Okay, there is uh, seven tools, right? I know uh, somebody was worried. Oh my God, Instagram is bugging me, man. So if you feel that, there are seven tools. They call us seven QC, quality control tools. Now, what happened is, um, these are the tools where you plot the data. And don't be surprised. Some of your organization will not use this tool, okay? This all comes from manufacturing industry. It's a, for decades, it's there. These tools are older than you and me. It's there, it's a grandpa. This tool's a grandpa to you, okay? They are for so many years, but not all industry are using it. But recent days, I'm finding IT industry getting addicted with fishbone diagram. They are getting addicted with Pareto diagram, right? These two are coming up very highly these days, but still it is needed. 
there is something called a scatter diagram. They, they see the uh, correlation between two variables, negative correlation or positive correlation. This is what they will do for COVID-19 issue. COVID-19 issue, they'll plot all the data and they see that since a person has a travel history, because of that COVID happened, two variables, they'll see any positive correlation, negative correlation. And there is no correlation between these two variables. Even though this guy didn't travel, he got virus. So there is no correlation. Kind of, there are a lot of ways of doing these things, okay? They do a lot of stuff. Um, sometimes I, I help people to read something about bigger projects in the world. When you learn that, your project will be so easy. For example, if go and read about how a census is collected in a country like India and China. So complicated. A lot of problems in that. It's so easy to make some fun. Some people put WhatsApp comedy about the countries where they have high population. But you have to be in the administration and see the problem. It's not that easy to handle these places. But if you sit in this place and you handle a project and you successfully do it, and that's really so challenging and so interesting. You have to read those articles, how they do that. When you do that, I'll tell you, you may be from any project, you will get some inputs from there, right? That's very important. I get a question, I'm going for PMP exam, I'm from IT, I'm from pharma, I'm from manufacturing. Why you ask me to read that? It's important. One day you will become a CEO of the company. On that day, you cannot go and read. So read now, then only you become CEO there, right? So start reading good things from now on, right? Of course, you can read a lot of news materials, that's, that's fine, but read something useful, which can drive you to become a leader or a manager in an organization. Good there, let's move. Hey, before moving, shall we play one video about the real project which won an award with the PMI? Are you guys good there to listen to the video? Yes. Okay, got a yes. Uh, yes. Okay. okay, let me get there. I right, know time running on. We have only 20 minutes. Yes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Time running. Time is crucial. Uh, hospital related project. Let me check my audio. Audio is good. All right. Cool. Hospitals have the power to save lives, but in a fractured medical system, vulnerable patients can slip through the cracks. And in 2005, that risk was reality for some of Queensland's sickest kids. To repair its pediatric healthcare system, the state launched a project to build Lady Saletto Children's Hospital, a cutting edge research and clinical facility that would consolidate and enhance patient care. Delivering the best care for our kids was something that we could all relate to. It got us out of bed in the morning and really drove us to, to get a successful outcome. The 1.5 billion Australian dollar facility promised to centralize services, cut costs, and make life easier for families and patients. The design also included a central energy facility and empty shell floors that would future-proof the hospital, giving it room to grow for decades to come. But first, the Oricon team had to rally stakeholders from three hospitals, two public and one private, around a common goal. By co-locating with our client, Queensland Health, we were able to have ready, quick, face-to-face -face access with people who knew firsthand what it was like to provide health care for our children. The project's executive sponsor, a doctor with prior experience working with both the private and public teams, helped bring the organizations together. He created a culture of accountability and stayed up to date on the project's issues and risks, which allowed the team to make faster, smarter decisions. Everyone went far over and above their deliverables, and that was because you had a line of sight to the leaders. They were accountable, visible, and bold in their decision-making. The eight-year project met its target opening date of November 2014, and today it provides a warm, welcoming place for local children to get the care they need. In its first year, Lady Salento Children's Hospital treated nearly 300,000 patients, and it will continue to provide safe, streamlined health care for the next generation. This project is different. It wasn't about building an apartment block. Over 3,000 days of work life, we remain committed to delivering the best possible care and outcomes for Queensland's sickest children. Okay, uh, I'm sure some of you have seen this before. 
I just thought of putting this because you got to get an idea how quality is important in this segment. The reason being is in the field of uh, medicine, the quality stands very high, right? There is no compromise there for the quality. You have to meet this standard. You have to maintain it. At times we work in a project which don't meet the people and life directly. So you may feel that it's okay if I don't do it properly also, it will survive. But actually uh, our, our work may touch some human or some life or some living being around the world. Whatever you do, do with the highest standard, the highest quality, right? And that's a very important point when I want to bring up. Whenever I see this kind of projects, I get a feel that, of course, somebody has put that effort to make it a highest standard. That made it really good in the market now. If you use something really well at your home, maybe your watch, your mobile, or your food items, or your refrigerator, somebody's put an effort. If they took some time, like some days we do, right? On a Friday evening, four o'clock, we don't like to work. We just like to say, it's okay, yeah, leave it. We'll see Monday. If somebody left like that today, you will not have that product in front of you, right? So that's a very vital part of quality management. Anyway, we'll touch a few more and uh, we'll move quickly on quality control. And uh, quality control is one important factor, which do something called inspection. You check the efficiency and quality of a product coming up. I'm sure many of you would have seen this or heard about uh, quality control, where they check the product, whether it is being highly or it's meeting the proper standards and it's satisfying the customer. And this is purely done by the quality department of your organization. Against what they will check? They will check against acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria was given by whom? The customer gave the acceptance criteria when they gave the product to us. They want a development to happen for which they gave a product that's called uh, acceptance criteria. We will check against the acceptance criteria. Is it meeting the standard? If it meets the standards and it also meets the acceptance criteria, we are good. Customer is good. Okay, that's one important point. So what you saw first is process improvement. Now what you see here is a product improvement. How the product improvement look like? Okay, let's quickly put an example here. Um, I'm sure you gave a car for a service sometime back or a two wheeler. Now they put a check mark here. If you watch out this pad, right? This pad, they'll have a list of items. And you gave some list of items. Hey, my air cooler is not working or my doors are not closing properly. Headlight is not good. Now, those items, if it is a fixed, that's called acceptance criteria. List of items, what need to be fixed. That's very vital. And when you buy a new home or rent a new place, you go and check it. Is it everything meeting the standards? Is it everything meeting what I want, right? That's quality meeting. Quality is meeting the requirements. If it has a specific balcony, what I want it is there, it's good. If the software application need to book for my railway tickets, it's booking, it's meeting. The standards are meeting there. You check those factors. We do day in, day out in our life, but when it comes to project, it involves a set of people. So we'll be aware of those information, right? Good then. Uh, we'll attend this one question and we have James joining our program who just cleared PMP. We're going to listen some good words from him. So quickly take this question before we go to James. To, to, to give a shot. <laughs> okay, answer starts coming up. Can someone tell me the keyword in the question which made you to answer that? What's the keyword the question you get out of it? Uh, there are several executing activities underway on your project. You are beginning to get concerned about the accuracy of the progress reporting. Ooh, somebody got it. Accuracy of the progress, something they're not hinting you well, right? Reporting your team members are doing. Uh, how could you verify whether there is a problem? Okay, two keywords you can go on. One is accuracy of the progress, something doubtful here, and something on verify, right? When you go with this two, you can quickly go with the answers. The answers, I'll start from the bottom uh, by elimination technique. Perform Monte Carlo analysis. Monte Carlo analysis not needed here. It is a different format. A regression analysis, not needed. Uh, create risk quantification reports, not needed. Now, 
it's a very simple question it don't need all these reports and tools they just want to see are we following the proper process to meet the standard so perform the quality audit and the audit will help you to check are we in the right place that's why they call the word verify right somebody called the right keyword verify you're verifying are we following the standards properly you'll go back and check is it properly done right now even now when the covid stuff are happening when people are getting to the problem they ask for the basic standards asking have you washed your hands properly are you not doing this stuff that stuff they're asking a lot of questions to make sure that you are into the process and when you want to go to back to the office these days they're asking to fill a form like recently where you traveled did you had this cough and thing problem they're checking what the process is, is this properly happen so that this person don't have any problem he or she can come to the office right so that is kind of a process checking you're checking the process okay quality audits are a necessary part of manage quality process process improvement i showed an example about an airport where they check and improve the process continuously right i saw most of you put the answer a uh, maybe one or two went with the b uh, b looks uh, create risk quantification reports uh, i don't think risk will happen here at this point uh, but risk mitigation plan can be written there. It will be the different segment, right? We will talk about that in a risk segmentation. But at this point, you are worried about their accuracy. So you have to focus currently what I can do. I can improve or work on, on the audit factor, right? That's a point here. Hope that gives some answer. Now, what we do is we will invite our person, Mr. James. Mr. James, you're online. Hi, Sriram. Hey, James. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining. I know it's much early morning. What's your time there now? 7.45 a.m. 7.45 on a Saturday morning. Sorry, man, to make you make up no early. Problem, problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, James is the one who cleared PMP recently and uh, he's so excited about his uh, success. So, we thought, so why don't we share the success story with all of our uh, candidates so that will be so useful for you, right? So James, first of all, congratulations on your massive success gaining this certificate. And quickly, I want to show your certificate to the people. Uh, yeah, sure. Just bring up the screen. Uh, here it is. So this is Mr. James uh, William. Okay, he's uh, there in uh, um, uh, okay. which industry are working on James now? Cloud yeah, architect. Software, yeah. Yeah, so cloud architect. And he recently gained his PMP and so excited. Okay, let's listen to James. Before that, let's give a congratulations to James. James, good round of applause for your hard work and making this a great job, All right? Okay, go ahead, James. Uh, share your some points, your success formula. Let it help people around here. Thank you, sir. So good morning, good evening, everyone. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Mr. Sriram, sir, and Mr. Rahul, because this would not have been possible, right, without their support. So surely I could out not think I would achieve this certificate. So I really would like to thank both of them for their really dedicated support and hard work. So thank you so much once one more time, and also for the uh, the participants, participants right, who are in the call. So I really wish them to maybe clear the exam as soon as possible. So best of luck uh, to you guys. Just I want to share a few information, probably the few adults, right, which I ca came across when I took my PMP exam. I feel definitely it will be helpful for a few folks. So that's the reason I just accepted uh, Sri Ram's request. Okay, I want to share uh, my experience to others. So even I listen a lot of experience, same way. So over past right, recently, I think Savro, we did it. He was the first person who took the online exam. So he Sri Ram sir, uh, brought him to the call, he explained. So it was really useful. I saw the video multiple times, how to take the exam from the online. Even I was not aware. So he was doing a great job. So probably I can share a, a few my experience. Uh, so first of all, what I would say, right? So you are in the right hand. That's what I want to say now first. So believe that. So definitely you will be clearing your PMB exam. So some people, uh, we have right a lot of doubts. Okay, so how is going to be, whether I'm going to pass, so how this coach would be. So I'm 100% assured that. So you are in the right hand. You just blindly follow what Sri Ramsar and Travel saying. <laughs> You'll be fast. Because that's what I did it. That's the reason I'm just sharing my experience. But it's up to you. So what I used to do, right? First of all, I just, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, they share the forty nine process right every day. So I I started this exam uh, March twelfth. That's where my application got approved from PMI. From the same day I booked my exam. The, I booked my exam for May fifth. That was the date I scheduled actually. So from the day onwards, right? I interacted with the Rahul Shriram sir. I got the uh, recording because I was not able to join the live session. So I took the previous month recording. I think uh, February batch and March batch recording. I got it. I started looking to that all the videos. So from the day onwards, right? He, he he kind of keep on insisting. See the 14 process. The whenever you wake up, right? Start writing the 14 process. I just literally follow for 53 days almost. 53 to 60 days was there. I literally follow the 49 process and also formulas. And also one more thing, right? So uh, as soon as I complete this formula, I just go to the LinkedIn. So I just open the free learning. I can see a lot of people, they will upload the certificate like this, right? I just uh, open and view the certificate. To be honest, literally I did this one. I just imagine myself at any cost, I need to get this RH class certificate. <laughs> That's what Sri <C-Ramsa> Ramsa told. <laughs> <laughs> there is something like this, right? Uh, whenever you want to buy a new dress or a car, you keep lipping, uh, browsing and seeing that again and again. One day you'll buy this, <laughs> kind of. Definitely. Uh, maybe it's funny for a uh, few people. I literally did that one. Every day morning, I just opened this certificate. I, <laughs> it may be, uh, I just visualize myself. Definitely, I want to get this certificate. This is what I do. Probably you can mm-hmm. practice the same thing. That's what I'm trying to say here. So That's this is the routine thing. So after yeah. that, right? So I got it, uh, maybe the plan, right, from Rahul for 53 days, one plan, next one is 23 days, another plan. So 53 days plan due to lockdown uh, and also because of other reasons, right, I was not able to follow that 53 days plan. So meanwhile, I was started watching the videos, uh, Sriram video. I just take the notes, all the ITTOs, what are the process he explained, right? I just started taking the notes. So then I followed the 23 days plan. I just uh, got the book, uh, Rita. So whatever the order he told, right? You have to follow the stakeholder, communication, then scope. So that's the same order I start reading the book. It's not detailed reading. Just I read uh, one time. It's kind of skim reading, right? It's very hard to uh, read for two, three times. Even Sri Rams are told, right? Don't uh, do for proof reading. Just read for once. You want to get the information. I just uh, watched all the videos. I got the concept. Then I started reading the book. After reading the book, each chapter I started, uh, you know, taking the exam practice questions. So after finishing that one, so they prefer the prep cost. That is the key material. So other thing I want to highlight here. So uh, before you start your study, right? Make sure, so what are the things you need to pass this exam? According to me, right? Sri Ramsar video, the Rita first aid, uh, uh, first aid right? So any uh, for me is Rita, that book. Three ramps are video, prep cost. So these three is the key resources. I believe that one, these three resources are going to make me a PMP person. I just followed this one. Probably a lot of questions will come. So whether I need to see this video or read this book, so I have to take uh, that uh, practice exam. So I just blindly followed these three things. I just cleared the exam. After that, what happened, right? I started taking the prep cost. So we have total around eight, uh, seven to eight exams are there. I started uh, maybe three exams. I took almost 50 to 55% to 60%. So definitely I lose my confidence. I immediately called Rahul. I was sort of, you know, worrying Rahul. I'm getting only 55. So I don't know what to do. Then he gave me all the links, uh, maybe the SharePoint link, right? If you see the SharePoint link, they give a lot of videos also. How we need to memorize ITTOs. So what are the 14 process, how it flows. And also how we need to uh, pass the PMP in the first attempt. So they will tag a lot of videos. I advise just go through the videos, try to understand the concept. So again, uh, I just saw the Sri Ramsar video because few areas, right? I got doubt, okay. So risk management, I'm not clear. So again, I moved to the Sri Ramsar video. I just watched those recordings. Again, I take the exam. So finally, like last two, three exams, I put almost 70%. So that's where I got confident. Okay, I can, I can go for the exam. I got some confidence within me. So that's how I prepared. So on the day of the exam, right, uh, May 5th, it was my exam. So because of COVID, right, I just conduct the support team. I just changed it to the online exam before it was the class center exam. So due to some technical reason, right, May 5th, I was not able to take my exam. So May 5th, it was 6 o'clock, 6 a.m. EST. So I woke up 4 o'clock. I just do all the preparation. 
I was so so excited to take the exam. Even I just completed my system test everything before, but unfortunately that day morning, right, due to some other technical issue, I was not able to take the exam. I felt very disappointed. So then I called the support team, right, uh, PMI support team. I just told them that this is what happened. So they started working on the issue. So they started creating the ticket. It took almost five days. So within that five days, right. I really felt very sad. Okay, I thought okay, we don't need to prepare for this online exam, so I want to go for classroom. So that's what I decided. So after five days, right, uh, they told that uh, due to some reason we are not able to identify because they worked with the PSMV also. They were not able to identify what is the issue, but they were weighed off from my fees. They said that okay, we are weighing off your fees. You are go ahead and reschedule exam. So I got the email on uh, Friday. So Monday, May fifth, I was not able to write the exam. On the following Friday, I got a confirmation from PMA saying that so we are weighing up your fees. You can go and reschedule the exam. So then I asked the team whether uh, we are eligible to go to the centers. So because of the COVID, right? So they told that no, so we are not a get clear picture when the center is going to open. So it's up to you. So then I decided, okay, anyhow, we cannot afford time to wait, right? Almost we I waited more than fifty days. So then I scheduled the exam on following Tuesday because I don't want to lose that rhythm, right? So again, that was a challenging moment. I I took a decision. I just uh, scheduled the exam on May twelfth. So I started preparing May twelfth. So that's where right. So I I got I got cleared my exam. Even the day of the exam also right. I got another challenge. As soon as I log in right, two o'clock my exam, two p.m. my exam. As soon as I log in the exam. I was not able to do that one. I just started begin the exam due to technical issue, right? I kind of it took almost fifteen uh, to twenty minutes. I keep on start restarting my machine. The PSMU person with me, he is guiding me to how to log in. He is giving yeah. the code and all. Uh, so James, one quick thought. I know you are explaining well. Thanks for that. Uh, one point on the the invigilator. Um, maybe some people may be interested to know that. So will they stay all time of your exam on the webcam? They keep looking at you and hearing you. What you're doing there is is it happening? Just a yes. question. As soon as you click that, so if you log into the PMA site, right? If you go to your exam schedule, so before thirty minutes, right? You can see the button called Begin Exam. If you click that exam, you do the quickly the pre-checking, taking your photo, rooms, everything. As soon as you finish that one, immediately the pop-up will come saying that the one person, right? The PS and view person, they will be available over the chat. Your camera will be active. they will be keep on monitoring they will be calling you also so initially it will happen until that software they will open but throughout the exam right till the last minute until you take the survey the people will keep on monitoring you it happened right. for me so right. some cases they will ping you some cases right if keep on uh, if you sh- i mean uh, read loudly right they will put the message text message okay don't don't speak loudly mm. so the person always opposite person right who was it said they keep on monitoring you right that's, that's a good message that's a good message yeah i know because many has a question how do they monitor when i am at home um the pmi application runs in your computer and it takes full control of your camera and mic and you can't do any adjustments in that and uh, they can see you but we can't see them so they'll keep watching you all the time and they listening to you what you do and what he james said is absolutely right you can't read the question louder the meaning behind is when it read louder it is something you are trying to tell the question to the guy who stands behind the laptop and trying to get the answer from them so they'll warn you a couple of times or more than that and then they may disqualify you if you keep talking or uh, the questions right anyway that's a good thought and that message from james james one of the question people keep asking what if yeah, my uh, system got crash or mobile or uh, my internet is not working my power goes down how do i get connected with this team members what what, what is the answer for that so when you first time log in right uh, you will give you a mobile number when you first time you download the software it asks you to give the mobile number from that mobile number only they will share the link where you have to take your picture you have to scan your ids everything so once you begin the exam right begin the exam i'm talking about uh, before starting the exam the person right he will tell you that if any issue happens you can keep your mobile with you not nearby initially before you start the exam you can keep with you if any issue happen right they will directly call to your mobile So once the exam starts, right, you can just keep a little bit away from uh, your desk. So if any issue comes, definitely they will reach you. This is what happened for me also. Right. They reached me two times mobile. They mm-hmm. guided me through mobile because I have to restart my system, right, due to technical issue. So they will reach your mobile. 
Great, great. So I can see the excitement of you, James. I know these points are so useful to the team. And uh, you know what? This exam is not um, so easy where you can just sit and write. It's a four hours of exam. And the four hours now they divided really well, that 89 questions and then 10 minutes break and again 111 questions. James, did you use a 10 minutes break? You were able to use a break which they gave? Yeah, definitely right. So even I, I, I want to maybe emphasize that eating chocolates, right? Yeah. <laughs> that is a very big tip. <laughs> no, it was yeah. a lot of, you know, uh, pressure, tension, right? After 90 minutes, right? More of the question also more uh, vague, right? It's not giving the yes. clear information. Yes. So yes. I just completed my 90 minutes. Okay. Uh, it took almost 120 minutes to complete the 90 minutes exam. Uh, oh, 90 wow. questions actually. Two hours. Hmm. Yeah. Because we have to review also, right? So right. often we don't get that option to review the question. Right. So I sure. took 120 minutes. Though I know it's a, maybe I took more time. Right. So I just reviewed it. Then I took 10 minutes break. I went outside, take yeah. water, eat two, three chocolates. So after coming, right, I got some energy definitely. So remaining, yeah. I have almost 120 minutes or something. 120, 120 minutes left for 110 questions. Right. So, but luckily I was able to complete it. Hmm. That's good. I know um, this 10 minutes is not counted in our overall four hours. So it's a free 10 minutes. It's a so happy news, which we didn't get it when you go to the uh, exam center uh, exams where the 10 minutes not there. And again, chocolates, I remember it, I did it because I used to carry that sneaker chocolate back with me because uh, your brain would need some kind of glucose energy. So when you take that, it'll be nice. I, mean, I know it's not, we are doing a big stuff. It's an exam, I agree. But still certain things are needed for your brain to feel a little more active. So that's why I keep recommending about chocolates on the exam time. It makes you better. But don't don't eat too much chocolates on a practice exam. Then you'll have trouble in your teeth or uh, some other problem will come up. So it's only for the main exam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, quickly, uh, James, there is a question. I know time is good running for you also. Uh, Omkar is putting a question. Online exam does not allow us to have white paper sheets. Okay. But mm -hmm. are they giving some MS Paint, not MS Paint, their tool they give there. How yes. easy was it for you to use it if you used that? To be honest, uh, the first 10 minutes you will get a demo, right? How to use the tool, highlighter, everything. But right. uh, I, I did not get a chance to use the tool. Even I was worrying mm -hmm. much because we okay. have to jot down the 14 process and formers, right? Okay. right. But unfortunately, we don't have that option. Right. But what I would say, right, for me, right, I did not get any network diagram question, not even a big formulas. I got only one small formula that is P and I, right? Probability mm -hmm. and uh, impact. Mm -hmm. That is right. just, I need to subtract that one. I just took right. the calculator, I did it. Okay. So apart from that, I did not get a chance to use that whiteboard. Got you, got you. Yeah, actually, you know what? The more you write the process sheet every day, your brain has all the details. I always tell the people, trust your brain, it will work. Don't need to look out for any paper. Because even you see a book in front of you, the Pimbuck book also, you cannot see that and answer it properly. But at that point, a microsecond speed, your brain will work amazingly great. Human brain has something called survival instinct. There's a survival instinct will work so fast when you want it. And uh, you can see some people go with the Google map on the roadside and they be just Google map. They lost the internet connectivity. They don't even know what to see the signboard on the roadside. So actually the signboard will be very clear on the board. You see that you take, take a left turn, you'll get the store there, but still they'll believe only the Google sign, right? It's something like that. Start believing your brain. First few weeks of months of preparation, that's fine. You believe on the papers. After that, your brain holds all the detail. You can pick up just like that. Anyway, that's a good thought. Um, James, I appreciate it. James are sharing some more details also there. Great. Um, I know it's a good detailed discussion, James. I appreciate it. Waking up early. I don't know whether you had your breakfast there, but you came for us to explain all the concepts here. We are so much excited to have you here, James. Uh, any other points from me, James, to the team? Sir, thank you, but just I want to have one last point. So right. before taking the exam, right, even I just came to know the last minute only. So we are in the PMA site, right? So practice exam, PM, PMA practice exam. Probably I think most of you guys are aware. So if you're not aware, right, so please go and take that exam before you're appearing for the real exam, right? It's available in the PMI side. So they will be giving the 200 questions, but there is no time limit. So you can take that exam. The exams question side, they took from the previous exam. So definitely it will be very useful for you guys uh, to take that test. PMI practice test, which is available in the PMI site. 
Mm-hmm. So I just shared the link also. That is a one forum where right. you can see a lot of people who are clear the exam are having the issues. Right? They will discuss in the forum. So it was right. really helpful for me. Also. So these right. are two things you want to share. Good. Good, good. So James, there's one question, last question maybe for you. Yes, uh, please. Uh, ch- are they checking the ID card or things in the webcam? Or- uh, not uh, really. So as I said, right, before begin the exam, you have to take a picture of yourself and also you have to scan your ID and also the room. That's right. what you have to do. Mm-hmm. Once the exam starts, right, somebody, they will ping you in the chat. They will ask you to lift your laptop. You have to show your surroundings including your tables your room but but they did not ask the id actually mm-hmm. right right okay yeah but actually you have to send a picture of your id card already is that so yes we have to we have to take our own picture and also our id card and also your surroundings good, good. Things you have to do. good there good there fantastic lot of good news from james really good but the way james do we need to be in the formals when you go for the exam or we can be in the shots also <laughs> no, it's, it's up it's up to you i think they don't see that much i think only they want to see your face <laughs> yeah of course some dress code will be there and they'll be watching no no, no no i don't think i don't think uh, we need to follow anyway this. anyway we love to ask kind of questions to embarrass you <laughs> yeah there is no dress code yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, good there, good there. Great, James. I'm so happy with your success. I was so happy hearing your voice over the phone call in the middle of the night. You, I cleared it. And you said, I'm top of the world. <laughs> no, because we need somebody to share, right? Because yes. this is the people yes. who I worked on, right? right? Yes. So yes. obviously, I want to share with you. Guys. When you clear the PMP, you tell to your manager, they will tell, ah, it's okay. <laughs> okay. And when you tell to your, some of the elderly family members, oh, is it one more exam? Ah, okay. <laughs> Because they don't know the value, right? Yeah. So you guys know better when you, values. When you talk to a person who knows the pain, they'll feel, wow, you did it. Okay, That's interesting. That's great, James. I really appreciate it. And um, of course, you give a lot of input. It's going to help more number of people. And uh, let this success continue. PMP is a starting point because generally I see people with the PMP, they go to the more courses and more growth in their life because it's, it's a certificate tells and gives confidence. Yes, I can do more. So you've got the confidence booster now. Keep doing more and good wishes from all our team members and everybody putting congratulations for you on the chat there. Good. Great, James. Thanks for joining and I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your time. Bye. Right. Great. That's James for us. Get a good job. Okay. That's a good job with listening to James. A lot of good information. Okay. Thanks all for putting the right questions there. Okay, what we'll do is quickly we'll complete a last few things, the quality, then we'll get back to, um, I mean, we can close our session. Uh, 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 I have to pull up my stuff. Here we are. Okay, okay, let's uh, touch a few more points before we go to the session. The last part of the quality, we were talking about the quality stuff. In quality, when you read from the PIMBOK book, you would have seen these segments. I will let me do it a little faster. I know we got around 15 minutes with James, but I thought it's a very useful one. Was it a useful one? Listen to James. Did it give some confidence to you guys? People are looking for the examination. You feel good there? Good. Yeah, it's needed, right? I thought it will help us in a way. Okay, there is no secret thing in life, growth. Everybody grow. I think uh, that's very needed when you go leadership track. No need to hide, no need to do something, listen from people, learn from people, keep growing. Okay, good, quick part. Um, for the people who are reading for the PMP books, you know that there is something called direct and manage project work where the team does the work. When team does the work, deliverable starts coming out. When a deliverable starts coming out, it will be taken to your quality department in the company. They will check the product and they'll tell that it's very fine. We have seen it, it's working good condition. Now they'll ask you to take to the customer. The customer will do something called as UAT. Can anybody tell me what is UAT quickly? UAT. User acceptance User testing. Acceptance testing. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great. I know some kids also saying behind your screen, I can listen to the voice. So good. Thanks for that. So UAT stands for a user acceptance testing, which is done by the customer. Then it becomes an accepted deliverable. This is a wonderful, beautiful day. The customer says, ooh, ooh, wow, we want this product. That's good there. Then they close the project. There's a flow, right? And customer feels happy. But this story doesn't go like this. Okay. Any movie has a after interval, there'll be some scenes. It was so hard scene. Okay. That will happen. That is, they don't accept it. They'll reject it part. 
when they reject it it will go back to your uh, change control board they'll check all the factors and again it go back to the team and team has to do the work again sometimes it will become ringer ringer row so as i keep going up and down but sometime when you have a good leadership team like you who can think proactively who can think design as a uh, quality factor who designs quality at the beginning of the project works really well right so uh, that's a message here with this let me move to the next stage i know i'm taking your time but still it's worth time today let's spend it kuku kuku let's go next part Ah, there's a big question. I put a big question the last. I want you to read it carefully before you answer. By the way, this is the last question for the day. Keep your question. Read it carefully. When you read such a big question, try to read the key words. See, I tell you, there is a big story, but you listen to the, all the big story. They are talking about what is design of experiment, right? Uh, they call us a DX, or sometimes they call us yeah, DX part comes up. Design of experiment, what it is? They are asking for it, the meaning of it, right? Um, whenever you see the experiment, you have to know the meaning of the word experiment. So you slowly you will uh, start seeing some connectivity in your answers there, right? If you see the answers here, they have a uh, design of experiment, right? Determine methods to use, to be used to, for research and development. Determines methods. I don't think it's determining the methods, okay? Uh, it's something on experiments, right? You have to be a little careful on that. So D may not be the answer. Okay. Uh, determine what a quality outcome is. Uh, no, because that is acceptance criteria. Quality outcome is going to be the deliverable product. Helps to identify the root cause of quality problems. No, I don't think we're doing root cause, right? Now, if you ignore all these three, identifies which variable will have most influence. Which variable will have most influence, right? And this is what the experiment will do. Identifies which variable will have most influence on a quality outcome, right? I know it's a little tough question. I won't tell it's an easy question, um, but I see 90% of people give me the right answers. I'm so amazed and surprised the way you are prepared for the exam. Really good show. Uh, but again, I'll pull up the answer. If anybody not convinced, please read this explanation. I know explanation also big. Design of experiment is performed in quality planning and uses experimentation to determine the statistically what variable will improve quality, right? which parameter will improve the quality. That's what they're trying to do that. This is what design for X or design X, they call it as a design for experiment. You can read this in the PIMBOK or read book, I book, it's there. It's a very important thing which you start doing in the very beginning of the project. You won't do in the end to do the beginning because you try to improve the quality standards. Right, so what are things we covered today? I know it's a, a good session of one and a half hours or one hour 45 minutes. We spoke about what is quality. We touched cold plating. We saw about fishbone. We saw about 80, 20 principles. Some of the quality tools, we didn't go deep inside, but we got some idea about it. And we found managed quality talks about the process improvement and control quality talks about the product improvement. You can ask me, Shiram, when I can do this? I will do this on Monday or do this on Tuesday? No, both should happen parallelly, simultaneously. This is how you work in any quality improvement process. It's not only for the project, for your personal life also. You have to improve the process of sleeping properly, having healthy food and waking up on time. And that improves the quality of output coming up. You grow up life well better, right? We thought you have a good process in place, not exercising, not good food, addicted to television, having these all, and if you expect output will come really well, sure will not happen. Even if it happens, maybe a short time it will happen, right? So it's a continuous process. Good there, hope you got some information and that's a little heads up on quality management from the team here. I believe it helped you. And if you feel that more information, help or needed, reach out to our business executive Rahul, who is there and my number is also there. 
You can also reach support at she learning. Most of you know this. If you don't know that, please mark these numbers and details, which is going to help you, right? And we're putting these videos in YouTube. If time permits, go and visit it so that you will get some clarity again, right? That's a better way of doing certain things. You see the videos again and again. Sometimes you get some ideas on the thought. Good. Then. Hope the session was useful for you. Can I get a quickly some comments from you? Uh, I'm going to feedback coming up. Great. Then. Thanks, okay. Shreeram. Yes, Thanks, sir. Shreeram. Thanks, Rahul. Okay, that's great. That's great. Thanks, Good to Thanks a lot. A very uh, mm -hmm. uh, interactive and uh, fantastic. fantastic. Great. Good to know. Hope it's useful for people there. Thank you, Shreeram. Hey, thank you. It's thanks really very much. helpful. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Me. Right there. Okay, well and good. Okay, that's great. I can see a lot of appreciation coming up there. Thanks a lot for joining and uh, have a great evening. Be safe and be uh, active on the learning process. Keep growing up, right? Good there and have a great weekend. We'll catch up soon in another session. Thanks all for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.